This video is going to be all about binding some resources, what's safe and not safe to do. I'm not a doctor or a professional, so don't take my word as law, but I binded for about two years before I had top surgery, so I feel like I have some experience I can share. If you don't know what binding is, it's just compressing your chest so it appears more like a man's. It can be done for cosplay, which I've done before, but I'm gonna be talking about specifically for trans guys. So there are two big don'ts in the trans world when it comes to binding, that's don't bind with duct tape and don't bind with ace bandages. I'm sure if you've seen other videos like this one, you've heard it a thousand times, but I'm just gonna say it once more don't do it it's dangerous you can hurt your ribs you tear the skin there's scarring and it just gets really messy it's gonna hurt you in the short run and the long run so just don't do it now there are lots of alternatives for binding if you don't have money for it there's giveaways on tumblr and youtube so check those out me personally i bought my binders from underworks and t kingdom this is my preferred binder i had one other white one like this and two black ones i like it because it's a vest and that way it doesn't feel like i'm wearing a bra which just made me super uncomfortable also also the binders that only cover the top can kind of cut you off around the rib section get really uncomfortable. With these, the compression is a little bit more evened out. And then my favorite part was the Velcro. <laughs> The nice thing about the Velcro is I can make it a little bit tighter in case my dysphoria is really bad and I can loosen it up if need be. For me, as you can kind of see, that mostly means tighter. There's some extra fluff here from when I would put the Velcro strap over because I was binding so incredibly tightly, which is not what you want to do, but we'll get to how badly I binded later. This is another one I had. It's my only Underworks binder. I'm not sure if I had any more, um, but this is the only one I've got right now. It's another full vest thing. The compression is just here, but there's no Velcro. I only wore this binder once or twice because for me, underworks were a lot harder to get on. They were super tight. They were super constricting. I'm pretty sure I pulled my shoulder a couple times just trying to get into it. So this is not my personal recommendation, but you might hear something else from some other guys. Then I had my Tea Kingdom binders without the Velcro. You can see there's no compression on the back. It's just on the front. This was really great for sleeping in case I was at a friend's house and I still felt the need to bind. I'd also use it if I was working out in public because there's more breathing space. So it's just safer overall if you're going to be really active. This is my last kind of binder. It was my swimming binder. I only wore it two or three times because it was so hard to get into and really, really painful. Um, that might have been because I had one that was too small for me. I'm not exactly sure. The binding goes all the way down it, so you're feeling a constriction all over your chest. There's a zipper at the front, which goes halfway down that makes it a little bit easier to get into. I got pinched by this numerous times. It was also still really hard to wriggle into, so I don't really recommend this swimming binder. See if you can find another one. Again, I think it's from Tea Kingdom, but I'm not sure. It's just it's the one that's got the blue on the side, so if you see it, it's not my personal recommendation. Now, I was a pretty good example of what not to do when binding. Let's start with how I binded for swimming. Like I said, I only wore this a couple times and that's because swimming caused me really bad dysphoria and so I just didn't go swimming a lot. Now, like the idiot I was whenever I wore this binder, I wore another one underneath because I wanted to compress my chest as much as I possibly could, which you should not do because it's not safe. It really hurts. <laughs> There was one or two points I was swimming with the two binders and my breathing would get so bad I'd start to feel sick and I'd have to take a break because I thought I was going to pass out. Really scary, like I said, not safe, just don't do it. Like I said with the Velcro binders, I strapped them as tight as I possibly could, which caused me immense pain. Every day when I took it off, I'd actually have an indent in my skin along with this really red bruise along my side just from how tight it was. Not to mention breathing was tough, but I also got some permanent scarring from it. And the last thing I did wrong was I wore my binders way too long. I would put it on the second I got up in the morning and wouldn't take it off until right before I went to bed. The only time I'd keep it off when I was awake would be if it was so painful I couldn't handle it anymore which did happen i mean i was wearing these things for as much as 16 hours a day which is just not smart if you can try to wear your binder no more than 12 hours a day to avoid scarring and scarring was the price i paid for not following that advice it's really tough to catch on camera but i have stretch marks all along my chest some on my side my back i even used to have some on my shoulders just from how tight and how often i used to bind so here you can kind of see sorry there's some gross acne on my chest but uh 
like the stretch marks I got from binding as tight as I did. It's particularly visible on this side. You got, yeah, there we go. There's some of the stretch marks I've got. There's some more around here. And I think this is a little bit tougher to see, but there's some stuff on this side as well, which was from the Velcro and how tight I used to bind with that. Now, thankfully, I don't really care. I'm comfortable with my chest post-op. I'm actually kind of proud of these scars I have. I think they serve as a good reminder to me for what I've been through. But I know a lot of people out there would be terrified of having these scars post-surgery. So if you want to try and avoid the stretch marks and the bruising and the scarring, then try and bind as little as possible and as lightly as possible. Trust me, I know it's tough. Dysphoria is killer. But what you really got to do is just play that balancing act with your mental and your physical health, which is not a fun game to play. But you got to do what you got to do. I wish you the best of luck in binding. I've got some links in the description to Tea Kingdom and Underworks. If you've got some questions about binding you think I can answer, by all means, put it in the comments below, message me on YouTube, on Tumblr, and I'll be happy to respond. Just please be safe, treat yourself well, and know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You will not need to bind forever. This is only a temporary thing, so make sure to think of the permanent consequences.